recording, just making sure. You are recording and I'm also doing it. All right. Folks, this track is being recorded, so we're good. It, I think it's going to be saving a local copy on my end here. And let's see, where is our timer? Nitishi, will you be a, the timer? Yes, I am. All right. Okay, everybody. So let me share the order again for our track B. Uh, congratulations for uh, making it this far. You guys uh, deserve it. You now have had a mock round yesterday. Uh, so you've done this before uh, on the student side. Uh, for the judges, this is your opportunity <clears throat> to give us, you know, kind of an independent jury uh, feedback on these top four in this uh, business track. Uh, what we're going to ask to do, because we have five judges this time, and I'm just, let's do a quick roll call. Uh, are we missing a judge this morning? I think we are missing Tyler. Um, Tyler, if you're here, say hello. Um, hey, Mike, how quickly can you gear up and become my, my backup? Mike Dennis or Dr. Rao? Mahesh? Hey, okay. Ravi. I'll yeah, I... If you need me to jump in, yeah, let me know. I sure can. Yeah. Well, I could uh, give you the link uh, or it's on the WhatsApp group for the mentors and judges. If you want to pretend to be Tyler, we'll go ahead and capture uh, the fifth judge score as well. Would that be fine? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Now, if Tyler does walk in, I'm going to ask him to pick up wherever you left off. But uh, I, think, I think at this point, we're going to, just run with you as our fifth judge. Is that fair? Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Uh, this this is a volunteer run initiative, so I uh, really appreciate all the volunteers and uh, you know helping us make this happen. So uh, the way this will work is, look, this is the team order. So I'm going to ask uh, you know representatives from Century Business to get ready. Uh, you're going to share your own screens. Uh, we're going to have a timer that's going to be pinned on our end. And if you guys are, you know, uh, whenever you share your screen, you won't see your timer. But uh, as uh, Pradeep was saying, if you pin that timer, then you'll be able to see it as the as the main uh, a screen uh, as you're presenting. Now, if you don't need it, uh, that's fine, too. Just be mindful of the time that's allowed to you and don't go over that time. Uh, we will uh, ask this time one of the judges to do their intros first before we let the team go. So Team Sentry, get ready. And let me just get there. Uh, I'm going to ask Sandy Agarwal, who's joining us from Florida, to do your one-minute pitch. So we're putting you to work <laughs> this morning. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, a little bit about yourself, and then that will give our next team to get ready. So Sandy you're you've got the floor say hello i'm going to stop sharing thank thank you so much uh, <clears throat> and making me the first one to speak up normally uh, you know when i'm the second or the third i get ideas but i can tell you i'm a little nervous seeing these youngsters smart so <laughs> um, i'm i'm uh, I'm from the Thai Tampa uh, chapter, entrepreneur, run a technology company on site in US, offshore in India, and we do a lot of work with government on the healthcare, Medicaid, child support programs, and we also do a lot of offshore SAP ERP work, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, entrepreneurship. For me, has been a mindset, the risk, the, uh, and the 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 risk that you take, and some of the things that I saw yesterday really made me start thinking. Hey, can this also be done this way? So honestly, it's a great learning for me uh, being on this event. I was nervous, but I'm a lot more confident today. So we would be. Um, offering them, I and mean, in fact, I just told Aditya that Andy, I would be happy Andy, to offer. Yeah. Andy, yeah. thank you. Bye this bye. is just an introduction, so I know that yeah. we're going to keep everybody to time. So that's just part and, of the game. So please play the game with thank us. Thank you. 
Awesome. Yeah. All right. With that said, let's get our first team. That's uh, Cent Centre Biz with Christine Christiana and Issue Two. And we're going to ask you to share your screens, ladies, and I will pin you after you share your screen. Uh, Nitishi is going to run our time. So Nitishi, I'll pin you as well. And then everybody, if you could uh, keep the the moderators or the speaker view on, you'll be able to see them and we could run this program. So here we go. Here's Christiana's screen. Judges, uh, just to make sure you have the the scorecard open. I'm monitoring uh, along with Netishri that your scores are coming in. So we'll just do a quick round robin. And and Dr. Lopez, Mike is going to represent Tyler for me. Uh, you're muted, sir. Does he have, Mike, do you have a... Uh, In the WhatsApp group? Scorecard? Yeah, I, I do, Dr. Lopez. I, I was able to get to it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sure, no worries. Okay. All right. So go ahead and pin the students. There's one. And another. Ravi, refresh in about two minutes. I'll update the picture for uh, Tyler and to Mike. So thank That's, you for okay. got it for the flexibility. It's called a pivot, right? Yes, we're all we're all entrepreneurs building it as it flies. So thanks, Mike, again. Yeah, okay. couldn't be more. Uh, I am now looking for Nitashi. Are you ready to do our timekeeping, ma'am? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, you've added, and three, two, one. Ladies, take it away. Please do unmute. Hello, judges and participants, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Aisha Tusaid, and I have here with me my colleague, Christiana Ola, to introduce to you Centribiz, a cybersecurity platform created for small businesses facing digital threats today. Our discussion is going to be from the program background and statement all the way through the impact and vision. Now, did you know that about 43% of small businesses? Yet, alarmingly, only 14% of these businesses are prepared to defend against such threats. This gap is very concerning, especially when you consider the fact that cyber attack can reach a devastating amount of $200,000, an expense that can threaten the very survival of small businesses. Now, accelerating the task for small businesses, what does it mean? Given this present statistics, we ask ourselves, how can small businesses effectively protect themselves from this looming threat in the next 12 months? That is where centuries come into us, into as our solution, which is specifically designed to address cybersecurity challenges faced by small businesses. Centuries is a web-based platform that empowers small businesses, particularly those in the underdeserved communities, and unable to hire security professionals to strengthen their cybersecurity posture. That brings to us the key features of Centuries. One of the key features include personalized cybersecurity assessment, AI-driven recommendation, digital skills for training and resources, mentorship pairing, interactive AI chatbot, as well as, now we ask ourselves, Centuries also provide a very responsive design, ensuring full accessibility on mobile devices. Also, it's, it, it benefits users from personalized progress tracking to monitor their growth. Now, there's also a dynamic assessment question tailored to their businesses, ensuring relevance, easy access to features, and also a downloadable content that supports offline learning. Additionally, there's also a clean, vis um, a clean visual design that, um, that focuses on engaging learning environments. Now, what sets us apart from our competitors? Centuries addresses the critical benefits like cyber smarts, know before us, ability such as the mentorship and comprehensive support tailored for small businesses. In contrast, she dropped off. You want to take on Christina? Go. Christiana, go for it. So the architecture includes React, AOS, um, Redux for the front end, Flux and PostgreSQL for the back end, AWS for scalability and security. So our prototype is that first users sign in or create an account, then complete an about all section and with data like size, industry, and employee count. 
Also, there is provision of security assessment questions adjust to adjust, adjusted dynamic, dynamically based on the business details for personalized recommendations. Also, the AI analyzes responses, direct users to a customized dashboard with tailored recommendations, as actionable steps and progress tracking. There's also dashboards that provide digital skills resources from leading industry partners. Also, AI peers users with experienced mentors for guidance and also provide interactive chatbots for immediate questions. Moving on to the impact potential, in the impact potential of centuries is substantial. By enhancing cybersecurity awareness, the platform empowers small businesses to proactively address cyber threats. So it fosters skill development, it fosters sustainable growth, it supports there's support for underserved communities as well. So through this economic empowerment, small businesses gain resilience and confidence, ensuring that they can focus on their growth while safeguarding their digital assets. Moving on to the future vision, Centripis also aims to expand to mobile assets. It aims to integrate AI during predictive security in insights and enhance mentorship networks for better learning support. So with advanced data privacy, global reach, multi-language multi -language options and real-time real trade intelligence, Centribis is said to empower small businesses worldwide and lead them to a safe social digital space. Thank you. All right, good job. You had 33 seconds on the clock, so that's perfect. Uh, judges, uh, so there's five judges here, so I'm gonna try to go round robin uh, you know, Sandy, you got to do the the, the welcome. Uh, so, uh, so do you have any questions for this team? Um, and this was a great presentation. And uh, one thing I was not able to understand, <clears throat> a great solution. How are you doing the mentor mentee matching? Um, I thought that that aspect uh, was I could not uh, find that aspect of matching. Okay, so through the use of um, AI, uh, open AI integration, um, the AI is able to analyze their responses, and you know from uh, the security responses they give and they're able to um, see which uh, mentors uh, is uh, which mentors they can peer to these users so the AI does the, the mentorship peering and um, provide users with the men mentors that uh, can guide these users into it towards a safe secure um, businesses all right um, can you sorry go ahead yeah yeah so uh, one question each for now, and uh, let's get uh, Andrew. You're going to be our second question. If uh, do you have a question for this team, sir? Yes. Um, who is the payer of this platform? Who who would actually who, who do you see would be subscribing or paying or contributing? Where where where, where would the money come from? Small businesses, small business owners will be the, the users of this platform and they'll be the one uh, subscribing, uh, paying for subscription for this platform. And there's also a free tier provided for the users as uh, a base tier that um, you know provides um, security assessment questions and also provide recommendations. But for the, for the paid tier, it involves uh, mentorship. Uh, they have to pay a little bit amount of Money to for the mentorship hearing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can I ask you that? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so um for the um subscription. Um so um after users um get to know that they are businesses at is at a risk after the assessment and everything. We have the mentorship. It's kind of like an external provider. We are going to um, offer the businesses. So if the business wants to go ahead to um to opt for an external um parties, that is the mentors. So that is when they have to pay this subscription in order to get to the mentors to help them with their business um threats and then um how to scale and how to avoid this kind of threat. But then if they don't want to subscribe for this, that is when we have the free tire base 
where you just have to take upon yourself to make sure that every um assessment or every outcome the AI has given you, you'll be able to take charge and then be able to keep your business safe. All right, thank you for that. Uh, Atul, you have a question for this team? Uh, hello, team. Uh, indeed, a great presentation. But uh, to be honest, I'm not able to understand what exactly you are doing in this because here you didn't mention like how your app application is doing the scanning, whereas more of a startup and I am looking at it as a service providing uh, something like where you are providing like connecting something and the people are doing the scan because on the website, how your app is going to get the permission and how the web is doing this thing, you didn't cover up this part, like how the things will work. Dashboard is fine. Presentation is fine. Login is fine. But how the actual application will work, you didn't define that. Okay, so uh, we are integrating AI to do the analysis of the response uh, through the integration. Then, the, uh, for instance, like OpenAI or Gemini AI. So the, the AI analyzes and uh, provides this recommendation, actionable recommendation to the users. How the AI is going to scan the end user? The question is only this. Is that? How the AI integration, even the Gemini or whatever you are using, how it gonna mm -hmm. scan for the risk assessment, the end user? Oh, okay. So the um, responses is sent uh, to the backend, uh, which uh, contains the, the AI integration. And uh, the AI uses um, NLP, natural language processing, to, um, to interpret the, the responses and then analyze the responses. And also, it uh, it's it's analyzes the responses and provide um, recommendations, security recommendations to the user. Okay, the just two recommendations left on back the clock. On so end. I'm going to ask the next team uh, judge, uh, Niraj, if you have a question for the team. Uh, yeah, just a great presentation, great concept. Uh, I like uh, what it's addressing, but I could not figure out what exactly it will do. If I'm a small business, small business has so many different flavors. So I agree with Atul, what he's saying, what he's asking. I still could not figure out as even after the explanation, but overall they're going in a very good direction. I just could not figure out exactly how they will help as a small business owner. But thank you. Okay, so... From the questions, so the questions um, collect data about their, um, their security practices, what they do, um, the security practices like okay, network security, how they secure, is, is their data encrypted, uh, like such questions. And uh, so these responses are collected and they are sent to, to the backend, to the AI, and then the AI provides these recommendations and the recommendations are displayed on the dashboard. These recommendations contains actionable steps for them to take. So this is an example of the, uh, of the recommendations which are um, set up to factor authentication. Okay, maybe the user wasn't, uh, is not using a multi-factor authentication previously. So the, the AI give, one of the actionable steps is to set up two-factor authentication. And from this, so these are the actionable steps you, here. Your so idea is good. Is... Everything is good. I was not asking the question because I'm a cybersecurity professional. So I thought might be I will ask it from the expert point of view. So this was the reason. But uh, exactly whatever you presented over here is good. But you need more experts to be in the picture because whatever you presented in the way, there are so many gaps in between which can't be covered up in this way. But you did. Like your ideation is good, whatever you're trying to achieve is good. But here, uh, like in the terms of the operations and the other stuff, you are missing so many things, which I believe definitely you will cover up with other technical team members in between. If you need my help, I'm a cybersecurity professional. So this is like a regular task to me. I am happy to help like later on even. All right, uh, judges, uh, there's only 30 seconds left on the time uh, there. Dennis, uh, do you, I mean, sorry, Mike, do you have any co uh, comments for this team? Otherwise, we're going to have to stop right here and uh, start. Moving. Yeah, no, I, I given time constraint, let's stop. Um, but I, I, I just want to say a good presentation. And I think you covered a lot of good mock-ups here. Um, okay.
thank you thank you for that and thanks for understanding we we do have to stay on time here so thanks a lot everybody uh this is uh, uh go ahead and stop sharing Chris, uh, christiana uh let's use this uh, opportunity now to invite uh, andrew to tell us a little bit about him his one minute pitch uh andrew joins us from atlanta uh in the mm -hmm. us Hello, people. I'm a serial COO. I've had back-end experience to software development, uh, data lakes, data science, business analysis, project program management, IP, HR, scale-up, scale-downs, um, organizational coaching, contracts, um, HR. I mean, just the full ramble. Um, enjoy working with a, a lot of startups and, uh, and individuals around the world and coaching them on how to find their feet. Um, and get themselves moving forward um, in Atlanta, originally South Africa, and uh, enjoy supporting all the way from Iraq to India to Dom Dominican Republic to uh, Kenya and Botswana. Um, so in enjoy uh, chatting with everyone. Some wonderful ideas here. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, judges, please do go ahead and finish your scoring. Nitishi is going to keep a, an eye out for me and tell me if we've got all the judges scoring the first uh, project here, B1 Century Biz, I'm going to refresh on my end here to see if uh, I see them. Judges, you do have to submit. It looks like, uh, Mike, you have to use Tyler uh, when you make the submission. Yeah. Or did you use your name? No, I'm using Tyler. Okay. So we're just waiting on you at this point. Uh, I did get the scores from Andrew and here it goes. Thank you. All the scores are in. Uh so the next team in the order here, either my orders changed or is it SLAP, uh, S-L-A-P, uh, B1? Yeah, I think my, my if I can get uh, you guys to get ready and share your screen, this is gonna be uh, team Luca and Andy Lopez. All right, I see a screen share. I'm gonna go ahead and add you to the pin, guys. Nitish, are you ready with the timer? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, three, two, one, all the best, guys. All right, uh, judges, thank you so much for being here. My name is Luca Neal. My name is Andy Lopez. And this is the Student Local Adaptation Program, also known as SLAP. So the way this is going to work is we're going to go through why this issue is so important to us, you know, why this prompt spoke to us, how we can help using our skills, some mockups that we created and how we plan to monetize and scale everything. Right. So who are we? Uh, my name is Luca Neal. I'm a computer science student at the University of Houston, and I was born and raised in Houston. My name is Andy Lopez, and I'm also a computer science student at HCC, and I'm also from Houston. So, right. So why is this important to us? Basically, Luca and I were at a burger joint one day and we had noticed that their website wasn't dynamic whatsoever. It didn't fit in our phones and it was inconvenient and we couldn't find out where was any, anything on the website. From there, we kind of realized that we would love to build something for them because we had joked around saying, oh, we could make something better. It would look better for them, whatever, whatever. And we just noticed how it connected with the hackathon idea for uh, mentoring and building something for uh, the business owner that we love. Right. So we know exactly what the problem is, right? We have all these local businesses we love that just don't have the skills to promote themselves all over the city. And we know, you know, students like us would be happy to help. So how can we actually implement that? We came up with a web application based solution that would take skilled and passionate computer science and finance uh, majors as mentors and pair them up with their favorite local businesses as mentees. Um, the way this web application would work is it would start using survey-based matchmaking. So we would take what the local business needs and what the students can offer, and we would make pairings based on that, right? So through this registration process, say a student can offer help with web development and a local business needs a new website. We would pair them up based on that. After that match is made, the web application would then shift into more of a digital workplace or whiteboard, which you'll see in a second. Um, that's fully customizable and really helps facilitate collaboration between the student and their local business. Here are the mockups that we made. Uh, here's our landing page. When we were making our landing page, we wanted it to look a little retro, have just like a really cool idea that just sticks out uh, more than everything else. Uh, you see the survey button there that takes you to the survey or the registration process. And it's amazing. Uh, this is our whiteboard page that we were talking about that we feel like sticks out the most to us because we believe collaboration is one of the most important things to building and helping everyone out. So the student would uh, get experience from all this and the business owner would get whatever service that they asked for from the student. 
uh, we want to implement the Visual Studio API. We want to implement the Zoom API so we keep everything in one web page. Uh, right. Yeah. So we know what our solution is. We know how we're going to do it with the web application. But how are we going to sustain something like this? Right. Um, essentially, what we want to do is we want to reach out to universities and have them do our promotion. Right. So through maybe like a mailing list or some kind of notification to their students, we would want the universities to let them know about SLAP, about the Student Local Adaptation Program, because if a student from a university were to go out and help their favorite local business, that would look really good for the university itself because it would show that they're learning from them. Um, without going into too much detail about the pricing model that we developed, it would essentially involve uh, the local business paying a fee for the program, right? So for the matchmaking and to the student themselves, a cut of which would go to us to host the web application and keep it running, and a cut of which would go to the student. So the cut that goes to the student would be variable based on what the student can offer and what they end up doing for the business. So say the student develops a website for the business, that would be one charge. Say they develop a website and a server, that would be another charge. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is pretty much mutually beneficial for both the student and the business because the student gains professional experience, which a lot of you know computer science students are having issues with that nowadays. And the local business gets the promotion they need and the digital literacy that they were lacking before. Um, I, I really enjoy this idea, but we want to make sure that that it's successful and we want to make sure that we're updating it as we go. Right. So in order to measure the success of this program, we would want to uh, include a post process survey for the local business and the student um, to answer to ensure that basically the process went as well as it could have gone as seamlessly as it could have gone. And we would then take that feedback and we would implement it back into the web application if there was anything needed. And of course, we want to be able to showcase our favorite local businesses. So we would take maybe a space on the website or on our socials and we would showcase the technologies and the promotions that they developed through the SLAP program. And I mean, in the end, this is really about collaboration. This is about person to person help. And we want to make sure that the students really care about who they're helping and the local businesses really care about what they're learning. So thank you so much thank for you so the much. Student Local Adaptation Program. All right, seven, 10 seconds on the clock left. So good job, guys. Uh, Andrew, I've got you on the list. I'm going to go round robin. Andrew, Atul, Neeraj, uh, Mike, and Sandy at the end. So Mike, uh, Andrew, you're up. Awesome. Great job, Great job, guys. Um, good improvisation and good use of the time at the end of the end of the slots. Um, how do you plan to um, get uh, to get the voice out there? Um, really interesting solution. Sounds like you you've thought about it. Sounds like there's a passion here. How do you how do you plan on getting the voice out there? Um, influencers, marketing campaigns. Uh -huh. How do you plan plan on creating making this thing viral? Yeah. So actually, when Andy was designing the logo, it we wanted to make sure it stood out as much as possible. Um, purely so that we wouldn't have to worry as much about uh, typical commercial marketing because we do think the university-based approach is the way to go. So uh, we would want, uh, like I mentioned in the slideshow, we would want to reach out to universities and have them promote us to their students. That way we not only build our, our client base of students, but maybe the students go out and they reach out to their favorite local businesses. And that little bit of promotion really helps us out as well because we're taking all these people that you know care about the issue and we're bringing them back into our web application uh, and making sure the process takes place there so yeah it would be mostly university based and yeah yeah i would think forward just think a little bit about how you make it viral um how you get influences most kind of people involved all right thank you let's have a tool next question sir uh, my question is regarding the finances. You presented it very well. You covered up almost everything. So nothing is left, but just uh, give some particular number to the financials, how you are like uh, expecting some repetitive business, like recurring business from the same people because you have like very defined TAM, right? Yeah. So if you already served a local area, so what's your business model? Like how these students will get some sort of a recurring business? Any ideation on that? Yeah, yeah. So um, as for the actual numbers, so I'll go over the pricing model just really quickly. It was essentially um, I, I started with the cost of what it takes to, to host a web application in the cloud. Right. So that's going to be one hundred to five hundred dollars a month. And I took the median, which is you know, two hundred fifty, put that through the year, assuming a client base of around 10 local businesses, 10 students. It would come out to the local business paying around six hundred dollars as a flat fee. And, you know, half of that would go to us to keep the hosting ready. 
And then the part that goes to the student would go up and down, or sorry, it would go up based on what the student is offering. Um, as for reoccurring business, I, I think we really want to to push the local businesses to, to be confident in what they work on from project to project. So I think what would occur, like the, the, the way we get reoccurring local businesses is we have maybe one session with them and a student mentor is specifically one digital skill. That way they build full confidence in that skill and they're fully ready to use it in their promotional tactics. And the way we get that business back, the way we get them coming back is there's a new you know, something new they want to dip their toes into that they just don't know as much about because the first session didn't cover it. Um, yeah, so repeat business, just uh, like I said, again, with the university-based promotion, that's how we would reach out to people in different areas. Um, and we would really just want to make sure that these students are, you know, focusing on the area that they're from and the local businesses that are from their area too. So okay. just for my clarification, again, uh, like uh, the student who is working for some particular person, right? Even in the case of the recurring of uh, the hosting, like whenever this hosting will be renewed, you are also paying some particular chunk to that guy, like who worked for that particular client, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the idea. Because we want students not only to be incentivized oh. by the professional experience, but we want to make sure they're compensated because, I mean, it, it just, you know, yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, let's get to Neeraj. Hey, so small businesses are always on the tight uh, timeline as well as budget. And I have personally worked with small businesses and students and all that. So how do you manage the timelines? Because we, if we give you as a small business owner a project and you guys are so busy in your own assignments and all, so how do you track the timeline where you guys have to be committed to, to finish that? Because you're, you're putting uh, businesses... Uh, on the hook here for the accomplishment, yeah? Right, yeah, so we actually have, um, on up on our dev post page, we have a, an image of a flow chart that we developed. So the whole timeline would should be around one to two months. And the way we would monitor that is through the, the, the collaborative whiteboard space. And with the use of the post-process survey, we would make sure that everything was uniform. Submit something? I'm sorry, Luca, we are short of time, right? So what happens if you guys can't finish the project on the, on the time you commit to a small business? I'm sorry, how do we make sure they on the time? Yeah, who commits that? Is it like a, is it like a company structure when we come to Luca and, and, and Andrew if you guys can't finish your project on timely basis? If they can't finish the project on time, we actually have a rematching structure based so that they could be pair up, paired up with a new student. And yeah, I didn't get those details, but thank you. Uh, I would give okay. it to other right. No worries. Uh, so let's go to Mike. Uh, your... Thanks, guys. Good presentation, and you covered all your bases. The question I had was, you described the post-project uh, survey as a means for capturing feedback. So do you have any methodology to measure feedback during the project? Like, how do you evaluate mentorship success during the project? As well as when you capture feedback post-project, how do you incorporate that feedback so that the loop is closed and then you can continuously improve? Right. So... Uh, to, to begin with, I, I think the customizability really makes it easy to implement the feedback into the web application, right? So you can already change so much about it that if we needed to, we could add modularity to it and make sure that everyone had the experience they wanted. Um, as for during the process, we would want meetings to occur between the student and business, you know, pretty consistently. And if needed, we would implement a during process kind of checkup report, but the idea is that the web application itself is a system between the student and the business, um, making sure that they keep everything in check with each other, right? Because there's something in it for both of them that they need to finish. And I, I think that's really where the, the during the project. Right. But typically, Luca, typically projects don't go in a straight path. There's always that raggedy curve <laughs> that it takes, right? To need at this point, I think it's important that you guys build something, some mechanism into your process, into your platform that allows you to sort of course correct and also evaluate where things could be not going very well. So you can sort of step in and intervene and maybe do rematch with another mentor or get a second mentor added to the program so that things move along faster. And it also improves your customer success and satisfaction. Yeah. Just one slide needed there for that, but very good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So we're got 40 seconds on the clock here. Uh, give uh, Sandy the opportunity. Sir, do you have a question for this team? Yes. Um, since the student that is being allocated as a mentor is a final year student, how do you ensure continuity after the student graduates uh, that the baton is passed uh, because there is a trust that the business is building with the uh, mentor? Yeah, so we actually had a, a similar question to this yesterday, and um, I was going to mention it earlier. We actually would want to save the progress that the business is making uh, with throughout their mentors, right? So say maybe the project isn't going as well with one mentor. We take all that progress, we save it in the web application, in the whiteboard. Uh, maybe, you know, the small business holds on to their resources. Right, that right. Way. Let's wrap it up there. We'll leave it there. Sorry, we're out of time. At this point, I'm going to ask Atul to do his one minute pitch uh, while the judges finish the scoring. Hi, my name is Atul Patria. I am from Chandigarh, India. So I'm running an IT company where my specialization in the product management and the cybersecurity. So like you guys are like doing the products. So like in a storytelling form, like I help you, uh, I help the products from start to deliver and to get the results. So this is what I do. So I'm a Thai charter over here and also managing this year as a SIG chair into the deep tech and the AI. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get the... Uh, Nitishri, I think I've got all the scores except uh, one. Just waiting on our, our uh, mic. There you go. Thank you, sir. Uh, all the scores for the judges have come in for the second team, which means let's go to team three. Uh, this is going to be Biz Elevate with Aman and Tanuj. So go ahead and share your screen, please. I will pin you guys as soon as I see you here. All right, I'm, I'm looking for you. Yes. There you are. And do you need both the uh, team members or one of you pinned? So I'm on money and I'm pitching the screen, pitching my, my screen. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if I hear another person speak up, I'll add them on the queue. But otherwise, you're ready to go, Nitashi. If I can get you uh, pinned as yep. well. Here you go. You're pinned. And three, two, one, take it away, Aman. Uh, so hi, everyone. Uh, so um, you don't build business, okay? You build people and then people builds your business. By these uh, golden lines, I am Anbani, uh, team leader of uh, Team Biz Elevate. Introduce you to my team, I am Tanuj. And we are working on problem statement number two from Thai Union Hackathon 2024. And... Yeah. So the main problem lies uh, what we were researching for this uh, hack, uh, for this problem statement and for this hackathon uh, was that uh, 55, 55 small businesses closes every single day in US alone, and which leads to 20% closing in their first year of operation, leading to 60% closes in their fifth year of operation. This leads to a cluster that uh, the small businesses are being uh, lacking in some faces like uh, mentorship and resources and, and all this stuff. This is where uh, Biz Elevate comes in between. So uh, the idea was Biz Elevate was just like an AI powered mentorship program. This uh, imagine now just imagine this uh, as as a you as a small scale business owner and uh, facing the challenges of the marketing and all this stuff and uh, requiring some mentorship and having mentorship uh, from the best resources possible like Elon Musk, uh, Jeff Bezos, and Warren Buffet. Uh, okay, uh, but. Uh, it's not possible through physical formats. The Biz Elevate comes in between. Biz Elevate provides uh, this AI-powered mentorship solutions uh, uh, with means of us. And this is where it comes and motivates you and uh, handpicks you for your handholding in your problem statements and gives you an edge for other for your competitors. So we worked in four aspects. First is uh, we act as a customized personalization method. Second, we provide AI powered assistance. Third is our resources. We provide resources for your mentors and we also provide business uh, tools that helps you uh, to scale up your business very fast. And uh, we have a particular reason to choose us uh, other than our competitors is that we have direct access to industry experts and uh, we have AI powered business architectures assistance and we have compre uh, comprehensive business analysis and expressed reviews. So 
along with this thing uh, we have implemented ai in a particular sense that we have uh, we named our particular ai erica erica acts as a, your personalized ai assistant it works in four main aspects first is it provides you smart uh, mentorship assistance second it provides you as business uh, tools management third is personalized course recommendation and data driven insights and and uh, along with this i request uh, tanush to uh, uh, share that thing uh, now now uh, talking about how we will work is first is uh, we uh, now just take it as a story and you are a small scale business owner you comes to bez elevate now Be what bez elevate does is first it evaluates yourself first it does it audits your business in certain manners like it asks you certain questions regarding your business and other things second it has personalized ai assistant mentorship in your personalized manner in your particular admin dashboard uh, there it gives you as uh, areas to improve where you are where you are lacking where your strengths your and weaknesses and your ai mentorship uh, uh, matching and all and uh, third is uh, we have list of mentors these mentors are uh, categorized in their particular domain that will be matched to your problem statement uh, particular problem statement uh, what we have audited from you and fourth it provides you as tools these tools are certainly helping you in business uh, uh, managing your time managing your human and all these things third mm -hmm. is uh, third the main thing uh, to implement ai was of erica erica works like magic uh, for small scale business it's just magical uh, first thing i have already told that its work is to assist you in personalized ai mentorship second uh, what it uh, gives is uh, these personalized ai tools uh, first is ai outbound sdr ai inbound sdr and chat sdr all these tools are uh, backed by erica's uh, own llms which are trained upon open source models third a uh, third is this it uh, it gives you 24 into 7 uh, ai mentorship uh, through uh, your personalized assistant and all and talking about uh, one more thing uh, what we have uh, get this uh, a competitive edge from our competitors uh, are these uh, five particular firms the uh, 24 personalized and access underserved areas and that's all Okay, thank you. Just, just on time because you were out of time. Atul, uh, I'm going to ask you to go first, followed by Niraj, Mike, Sandy, and Andrew. Uh, Atul, you have a question for this team, sir? Uh, what exactly when you mentioned these uh, mentors over there where Neil Patel and all, so you are just only sharing the learnings from them like in a way or like you are putting them on board? Uh, so first of all uh, once you have audited, audited your business and your requirements we know your requirements and your goals and what's your vision second uh, is this it personalized uh, erica would do a personalized ai mentorship it would get assist you in all this stuff Sec third step would be two mentors uh, once we have audited and we have proper reports and we have proper uh, assistance from ai third thing would uh, would be assigning some mentors these mentors will audit along with the response from the ai and along with their market research and their experience will guide you on their uh, steps ahead so my again question is like are you putting these mentors on board so these people are going to work with you like you place their uh, pictures so you have like you some know, sort of a discussion with them uh no no sir these are just sample on my website as i need to put someone yeah okay thank you niraj You're you're on mute, sir. Great presentation, Aman. I think you had too much to talk about, and you to spent too much time initially about you know just trying to put it together what you really want to say. Um, should I work a little bit more? Uh, my question is about how you market this, and you didn't even talk about the pricing. So, so go ahead, please. Uh, sir, if you are able to screen my screen, we have a. Uh, what Bez Elevate as now just expanding as a uh, startup idea. We have uh, three strategies uh, which we say as go-to-market strategy. First would be uh, industry and local business partnership that uh, we will go to industries and local businesses and ask them to uh, come to our website and experience us. Third, third, second would be college collaborations for mentor pool. Uh, like we would ask colleges uh, to give uh, 
to experience their uh, entrepreneurship community and all uh, business community to experience biz elevate biz elevate third would be we will have a marketing team and uh, we would put a marketing uh, all around for biz elevate to enhance our customers okay thank you for that uh, mike you have a question you're on mute sorry Good presentation, Aman, and uh, I think you have built a good prototype. It's pretty slick, and you also have pretty good UX, which is impressive. Uh, my question is, you know, one of the challenges that was given to you is to also help the underserved and rural populations. How do you yes, take sir. the platform to those targeted populations, and how do you enable them to also leverage your pro your platform? Uh, sir, uh, basic, uh, sir, the key points of uh, that underserved areas is that they do not have very uh, good uh, internet connections and all this stuff. So we would, uh, in Biz Elevate, we have a community section. This community section enables you to enable uh, input your ideas and all this stuff. This is a one-stop solution we would, where you would find all the mentors, your ideas and your pitching and all this stuff. This uh, a key feature of community club is that it, uh, provides you a phase of community where you uh, a sense of belonging to some business community. It gives you that uh, you have a community where you can access to the people without accessing uh, some um, online stuff. And this thing, it gives you an advantage where uh, some well-established business owners are there to assist you and some uh, great people which are there to uh, solve your uh, real-time problems. So, so this is a free sort of a program, like anyone can join the community and be part of the community. They don't have to uh, be subscribed. Uh, yes, sir. just for the sake of community, we are putting it for free, uh, free. and uh, for our personalized AI mentorship, we have premium models for this thing. Gotcha. And do you have any offline capabilities? Sure. Sorry. Okay, uh, never mind. Never mind. Go ahead, Ravi. Yeah, let's give Sandy a, an opportunity. There's three minutes on the clock, followed by Andrew. And then if there's extra time, uh, we could certainly uh, open it up. Um, uh, um, I thought there were a lot of too many ideas and complex uh, uh, solution to incorporate. If you were awarded this uh, prize, what would be the first problems you would tackle in the first two months? Uh, mm, so the main problem is uh, mm, what would I say? The main problem to tackle uh, mm, the first two problems that sir, uh, the uh, main problem we'll tackle will be fighting mentors for our program, and we'll we'll build all the programs for uh, for the community first, so they can experience the free model, and then we can incentivize them to join the paid models as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Andrew. Thanks, guys. Um, so I would go along with way too much information. It sounds like a simple problem that you overcomplicated with too many slides, too much text, too much bouncing around between screens. You're trying to make things too dynamic. The the handover between the two of you was not fluid. Um, it, it's clear you've not rehearsed um, or practiced this really slick. Well done. Um, the concept, I think, is the, the fundamentals of it, I think, are, are good there. I'm, I'm curious on your uh, market adoption, again, and kind of how you're going to get out there. There's a lot of talk about free not working in terms of doing the conversion into paid subscriptions um, if you let it run for too long. So what does free mean? How, how you know, what access, what is the actual, have you considered the actual the, the conversion message that allows somebody to go from free into paid? Because uh, free... When you let free run too long and then you make it paid, you get abandonment, and and those are industry industry norms. How are you going to manage this? Uh, so, so we can just okay, okay, Tanaj, go ahead. So we can just provide them some 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 only some of the community section such as community section, and we won't provide them with more than one or two courses at a time. We'll just provide them with one or two courses at a time. Then we ask them to subscribe to more to join more courses. 
okay okay tanuj let me see uh, so for uh, free version what we have is uh, providing them uh, basic mentorship and some basic digital tools and for pre premium models we would access them features like advanced ai analytics and industry specific uh, mentors mod uh, modeling and all this stuff and a wide uh, a variety of uh, business tools to be implemented in the their business what i say is this uh, these okay. two categories for free and premium models then then i would just quickly say and um, giving over to mike just make sure that your message around the premium model and free is a route to get there don't focus so much your message on free mike you had some additional stuff 25 seconds on the clock yeah my question was uh you know do you have any offline capabilities uh so yes yeah, uh offline uh capabilities would be first would be uh, this community section and second would be your resources yeah sure resources I'd like to share the resources uh so yeah, resources would be specifically to your uh region and your customized uh, business domain uh where it has all the knowledge hey, where we guys, can uh, you're, you're start over time on this so i'm gonna ask you to stop and at this point, I'm going to request Neeraj to do his one-minute pitch. Yeah, hi. I'm a uh, serial entrepreneur uh, from Atlanta. I uh, I ran a company for 19 years, and I sold it in 2021. I'm an active investor right now looking for a small businesses like yours. Um, and I'm also a short member. And I'll see you, some of or all of you, in Bangalore uh, next month. All right, short and sweet. Thank you so much, uh, Neeraj. That, uh, that was a good message about seeing everybody in Bangalore, the, especially the student teams. Uh, Nitishi, I'm looking at the judges. I'm waiting on one more judge to do the. Oh, there it goes. He just submitted. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. So at this point, the, the last team. Ravi. Yes, Dr. Ra. Yeah, we would like to invite all of them to Mysore, not only Bangalore. Oh, sure. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. The president of Mysore is on the call as well, listening. So, uh, yes, the last finale is in Mysore. So it goes from Bangalore to Mysore. Uh, we'll share all that information uh, when we go back into the main screen. Uh, so at this point, let's get Team Horizon. Uh, folks, go ahead and share your screen. We've got Puneet, uh, Shamant, Divya, and Praran. Uh, thanks for raising your hand. That helps me add you to the pin quicker, but do share your screen, please. So, all right. And then Nitishi, if I can get you ready as well, we're gonna, yes. no. sorry, this team has more people. So I need a little bit more time to pin everybody. Uh, thank you. Thanks for keeping your hands up there for me. All right. Um, if I'm missing someone, I'll just add them. Uh, Horizon, you are good to go. Nitashi, ready? Three, two, yes, one, right. go. OK, so good evening, all. Welcome to Horizon, an initiative that uh, an initiative to reach beyond the uh, to reach out to the undeserved communities. Well, uh, talking about our problem statement, coming from Mysuru, a place where uh, uh, most of the students face difficulties in placement and having practical experience. And on the other hand, small business owners face difficulties when, uh, or lack digital knowledge. So not just Mysuru says the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. It is a dark reality to know that only 25% of our new business make it to 15 years or more. There comes our approach with a new, uh, with a new student based mentorship model, where both students as well as small business owners are benefited. Why students might be the question that comes to a mind. Well, if you have to consider any mid-sized city, the total number of students in any top engineering colleges amount up to 12,000 students. Assuming half of the student core is capable and interested in mentoring small businesses, then wow, it fully meets our demand and, um, and helps us to bridge the gap between the mentor pods or the nearby students. Talking about why selecting students when you have AI or why can't you rely completely on AI uh, model and why students? The very simple reason is that the difference between AI and human beings is the ability to critically think. Well, AI would be AI is based on certain predefined algorithms. Of course, I'm not denying the fact that we can't take 
in AI. But of course, its usage is very limited. Talking about students, uh, students are critically think, and when it comes to certain problems by the mentees or small business owners, they can solve it out of the box, or they can give even more better realistic ideas compared to AI. But we also have made use of AI. Uh, talking about how students are recruited, is the process reliable one? Of course, yes. Students are recruited through field-specific assessment and personal interview, and those students who meet the eligibility criteria are taken in, uh, are taken on board. And they also undergo a rigorous uh, training process where we train them regarding how to meet the needs of the mentees, and at the same time, uh, what all, uh, how to uh, handle various mentees, various problems. Uh, we try to give them more of a mentor, uh, a mentorship uh, qualities in them. And then talking about how mentor mentee matching works. Well, we take an input from the mentees regarding their needs, their liabilities, and what they require about the digital knowledge that they require, and also about the business side, and also from the mentors, their expertise in digital, in digital specific topics. We also give more importance to location-based pairing, where we pair local mentors and mentees because with a very simple reason that they can understand the regional challenges. We also have um, option for uh, going in live or uh, meeting the mentors and mentees offline and uh, engaging with them. Later, coming uh, talking about how do you keep your mentors and mentees motivated? Very well, important reason because motivation is a prime important thing that we have to give importance to. Uh, so we give them various incentives and recognition. That is, we recognize various mentees and mentors for their hard work. Uh, we give them uh, NFT badges to top mentors as a symbol of achievement and exclusivity. We also give, uh, we also showcase mentees uh, who have seen success because of this men men mentorship model. And uh, during our uh, global summits, we also give them an opportunity to showcase their uh, uh, business model, the small business model that they have. And this is how the networking, uh, in order to build networking. Talking about a unique differentiator, or what makes us unique, uh, then it is the, then the answer is Skill Lab. Uh, Skill Lab has been initiated with the motivation that the mentees get a chance to practice or get uh, to practice the digital knowledge that they have gained through our mentorship model in life. And then talking about whether our model is a financially sustainable one, yes, of course, it's a financially sustainable one. The student mentors get global certificates and recognition. The mentees get free mentorship and also premium mentorship access. And, uh, and through these premium mentorship, we look after our uh, expenses. If I have to show you the our model, then here it goes. We have an inbox challenge. Chat, uh, chat with AI for various, um, any doubts or any concerns that you have. And this is the homepage. Thank you. Uh, we are open to questions. Okay, 20 questions, uh, 20 seconds left on the pitch. So good job, team. All right, this time I'll ask uh, Mike, uh, followed by Sandy, Andrew, Atul, and Niraj. Mike, sir, you have a question for this team. Yeah, thank you, team. Uh, good job on the presentation and you stayed in time. That was good. Um, the question I have is, um, you mentioned that you train your student menti mentors. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on how that training occurs and what kind of resources you have on your platform to train these mentors effectively, especially student mentors? Okay, let me start and then my friends would uh, pitch in. Uh, if I have to talk about uh, what basically we give them is, how uh, we uh, give them what scenarios the mentees are facing. Certain small businesses, as in retail companies or healthcare companies, what are their needs? And how can you meet their needs? Is what we, we don't train them much on the digital skills because the recruitment process itself involves uh, that testing. Rather, we uh, teach them on how to deal with various mentees, how to approach them, and uh, basically the how to have a very good environment, diplomatic environment with the mentees. And in case they require further training related to digital in depth, we would also provide them that. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, in um, very good intention, um, uh, I could feel that again, this was, this seemed to be a very complex uh, solution to make. You mentioned there were 6,000 mentors which to me is a very large pool base. How do you filter uh, that such a large uh, mentor pool base 
And again, I repeat my previous question. What would you do in the first two months uh, if you were awarded this award? I'm sorry, sir. Okay. So what would uh, you do uh, if you were awarded? And what, what, what do you prioritize, Divya? Did you hear the question? Uh, no, yes. sir. Uh, I'm sorry. Did any I of your team members anything. hear the question? Uh, no, okay. sir. Actually, there was Okay. Sandy, you want to just quickly summarize that question? I think okay, there are... Sorry for the internet. No, no, that's okay. You mentioned you have a large pool of 6,000 mentors, uh, which seems to be large. How would you filter those? And it seems to be solving too many problems. What would you do in your first two months if you were awarded? Okay, sir. Well, talking about the first thing, filtering of mentees happens through a field-specific assessment where we will uh, assess them regarding their expertise in terms of digital-specific knowledge. So we would also take give the, uh, we take up a personal interview on how they would handle various situations, giving them case studies. So through this process, we would filter out the best mentees and recruit them on board. Then talking about the second question that you asked, uh, the two months, what would we do? Uh, we would first give them a training session. Uh, the training session would be for mentors. We would not make them. Uh, we would not expose them to our uh, mentees. First, we would rigorously give them practice on how to handle various mentees, how to handle various situations, and then we would expose them to the mentees and uh, try to match them. I hope my answer made the point. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. You're Thank up. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm curious on the retention, um, um, ment mentee mentor retention, re retention, um, and then the, um, the 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 movement of money, the payment. Kind of, how do you you've got six thousand men available already? How do you plan to replicate those numbers? I'm not sure what geography that is in, but how do you plan to replicate those numbers that allows you to scale and how do you retain them? Okay. When it comes to retaining, uh, since they are students, of course, after graduation, they would uh, go and look at, look out for jobs and everything. We have one option where if they have done really good in their work, then we try to give them, uh, we try to keep them on paid mentorship. That's first thing. And secondly, if I have to say 6,000 mentors are available, upon filtration, it might amount to a certain like 1,000 mentors, uh, I mean, if I had to take 1,000 mentors also, you want me to talk about the revenue or something in specific? Yeah, so I'm curious on the, the, the making of money. Um, yeah, how, 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 do you, how do you keep these people? So you've got 6,000 people involved. Who's paying and how do you keep them involved? And the reason I ask, because I'm part of Push for an ADP list, um, and to keep people engaged is not, is not easy. So, so answering that question... Um, we are actually only paying the top 10% of the mentees, my mentors. We are paying the top 10% mentors. The remaining mentors, what they get is they get the in, in real life experience. They are dealing uh, by dealing with a small business entrepreneurs. They are able to get the skills they need for their, for their journey. So we are only paying the top 10%. And adding one point. All right. And also say that uh, we are making uh, the part about making money. There are two plans, our three plans actually available in our app. One is a free plan, and one is a basic one which is for forty nine dollars per month, and another one is a pro plan which is for one forty nine dollars per month. We would make revenue from that, and we would pay the top ten percent or twenty percent uh, mentors who are best in their field. And the uh, and, and the some part which also goes to the server costs etc. All right, two minutes and 20 seconds on the call. So, Anu, uh, Atul, Atul, you're up. Actually, I have a few questions. First of all, when you mentioned, like, uh, in each college, there are 12,000 students, like you mentioned about the filtering thing and all. But why these students will join you? And another question, why these mentors will come, up, come on the board where you mentioned the global certificate for the mentors. Why do mentor need these global certificates and how you uh, suddenly put yourself in an authority to issue these global certificates as you exactly use the word global, right? So first, please answer these two questions, then I will shoot other. Okay, so, so uh, of course, uh, becoming globally recognized is a tough job for all of us, but uh, 
one thing is why mentors require these badges is that we provide NFT badges, so they can't fake it. And then uh, we have a very rigorous process that is involved for recruiting them. So people can be reliable on them and there's their uh, knowledge about it. So once recruited, they have better value when they work with our company. And uh, talking about how our company is going to be globally certificate, uh, how our company can give them global certification, then of <laughs> course, uh, these mentors uh, and small business mentees would be recruited. Uh, we also would take sponsorship from various other uh, companies various globally recognized companies which might get these they can also pick up can i mentors. rephrase can i rephrase my question my first question is when you mentioned there are like 12000 students in the college you mentioned about the filtering process my first question is why these students will come on this app and they'll engage with you first question is this only okay. 30 questions to answer that question and we have to wrap it up uh, that would uh, that would put a lot of weight on their resume because they would be getting uh, certificates which are weighable in terms of markets. Okay, and why these mentors will come on the board with you? Because they might get better uh, certification practical experience while they're working with small business owners and would also pull in certain sponsorship where mentors, they can apply for jobs. Mentors, mentors, not mentees. Why mentors will come on the board? Yeah. Uh, Let's drop it there. All right, we got it. We're out of time on the question and answer there, so we'll we'll end with that. Uh, Mike, can I get you to do your one minute uh, presentation for the students and uh, your spotlighted sir? Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Today I'm playing Tyler, uh, but my name is Mike <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> and uh, you know, happy to jump in here. Uh, so. I am uh, based in Los Angeles, California. I have, uh, I'm relatively new to Thai. I, I've been a charter member for the past seven months. And uh, I really appreciate uh, joining Thai because I've made such good connections. And I think it's a great organization to be a part of. Um, I have 25 plus years of experience in technology and uh, insurance domain. Uh, I am a senior vice president and a, and a chief architect uh, for a large financial services company based in California. And uh, you know, I congratulate all of you who have made it far and I wish the winners of this tournament a good luck. And I hope you'll really continue this journey, even if you don't win it today, that you'll continue to you know, collaborate and uh, uh, flame your ideas and continue to you know, serve the communities uh, in and around. And I, I, I really think that you all have a great platform with Thai and continue to leverage the people that you have here. Um, you know, contact us on LinkedIn. Many of us will be happy to mentor you guys through your journey. So that's a little bit. Thank you, guys. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, stepping in and being well and told this morning <laughs> to be a judge. I appreciate that. Look at that. All the judges have scored and we are green for the next part of this. So teams, go back to the main room. Judges, please stay here. Uh, this is going to be uh, an opportunity for the judges to just look at the score sheet and deliberate and finalize uh, teams. Go ahead and hit the leave button and go to the main session where Dr. Lopez has some slides ready for y'all. Uh, 